I'm hello, your personal assistant. I want create I like that. Oh, it's still it going. Checkboard. It's to restart the system to <laughs> Nope, damn it. <laughs> so it seems like we're getting the authentic Windows experience with this. Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at a Linux distribution. Quite a few of you suggested that I go ahead and check out, and what this is is Linux FX. Now, I made a video a little while ago going over Ubuntu Kylin, and I titled it uh, Windows Clone Question Mark. And it kind of looks like Windows, but compared to this, this is the true Windows clone here. Because at least based on their website, it seems to be their actual objective. If we go ahead and take a look at their website here, this is the linuxfx.org. You can see that it looks a lot like uh, Windows 10. If we look at these screenshots down here, that's the Windows 10 login screen. It says Adobe Creative Suite. So they might have Wine and a couple other things installed to make installing those types of applications easier. It says Office Suite. It doesn't say Microsoft Office, which that's not. That looks a lot like w WPS Office, but I could be wrong. Go ahead and close this out here. Now, one thing I noticed when downloading this, if we go over to Downloads, it's Windows FX right here. It seems, at least according to their website, the only way to get this is to purchase it for a minimum of $15.00. Which, I mean, if you like the project and all that, $15 is not too much to go ahead and support them. One thing I found out, if you want to get this for free, there's actually a um, link to download a slightly older version on the uh, DistroWatch website, the 10.5 version. So that is what we're going to be going ahead and checking out today. So let's go ahead and go over to this virtual machine I have right here. First things first, this is a direct copy of the uh, checking disk screen when you uh, boot into Windows. So it looks like they're gonna try to do absolutely everything they can to make it not even look like a Linux distribution, but we will see once it uh, completely boots up here. So first things first, it kind of read my mind, it booted right into the ability to change the display. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I got a question on why I go with the uh, 1360 when I'm in this virtual machine. The simple answer is it is the largest 16 by nine display that is natively available in VirtualBox. So we're gonna keep all this the same, apply this so we can see everything a little bit better, keep this configuration, uh, close this out, and now that we are in here, uh, this looks like a uh, Kratana type thing, which, whoa, we're gonna go with English. So it's already giving me Windows vibes for sure. I'm getting, um, here, I'm gonna move myself out of the way. I'm getting warnings, things aren't opening. Well, random things are opening. So it's so far, I'm very, very impressed with the uh, trying to be like Windows. So straight from the image, what do you want to do? Configure, start the installation. So I'm talking crap, but this is actually kind of nice that they uh, have this message asking you what you want to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this for now so we can kind of explore the system a little bit. Uh, uses this Windows background, I like it. The icons are close, but not a direct ripoff, which is nice. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the My Computer directory here. The layout is very, very similar. These icons right here are very, very close to a uh, direct ripoff. Uh, going through here, let's go to the file system and see how they have this laid out. So it has the Linux file system, we knew that, but I was just curious on if it was gonna try to really bamboozle you and put things in different name directories, but it seems it's holding true to what it actually is here. Um, I know it said this is either Plasma or Cinnamon, the actual desktop environment that this is running. Uh, we could probably figure that out. So let's go ahead and go into the start menu real quick, see what this looks like, and check out some of the applications we get. So this looks a little bit like the Windows 10 one. It's different and yeah, this is for sure KDE because if we go about um, Oh, it's the cinnamon cinnamon desktop. So I was wrong uh, Cinnamon has improved it well, it's highly customized version of cinnamon But this is a menu in cinnamon that has been completely changed to Attempt to mimic the Windows 10 look so let's kind of skim through here and see what applications we have under accessories, we have Etcher, so that's interesting that they included that. Usually that's uh, not included. I'd recommend Popsicle, or uh, I think it's Woe USB if you're trying to burn a Windows image. 
uh, Clipman, Fonts, Files. I like how some, like this Files icon right here is a direct ripoff of Microsoft's, but if you go over here, these file icons are not, this is, it's kind of, it's a little mixed up here, but it still looks good. I mean, I can't complain too much. Uh, go down mouse pad. <laughs> mouse pad, that's a direct icon text editor. They took those icons from Notepad. Uh, that's funny. Uh, Visual Code Studio or Visual Studio Code, they have that built in, so that's cool. Wine Tricks, Games, they have Steam. Uh, they have GIMP. Um, they have AnyDesk and TeamViewer. So you have all the tools you need to connect to a uh, telemarketer scammer if you would like to. Uh, under Office, yeah, this, I'm pretty sure these are just ripped off icons. Let's open up Office Center and see what they get. Yep, only Office. So they just installed only Office and replaced the name of the icon with Microsoft Office stuff. Uh, that's kind of silly, in my opinion. Um, programming, visual code, sound and video, they have simple screen recorder, rhythm box, VLC, that's all pretty good. Under administration, they have some tools, so like Gparted, that's good. HTOP is here, so we go ahead and open that up. It's all looking good. Uh, let's go back in here. So that was administration. Preferences, we have a whole bunch of settings. Everything you'd expect, and a lot more, it seems like extensions, effects. Let's go into effects. Let's see what we got going on here. So this is just uh, cinnamon settings. Uh, Windows effects, customize, customize settings. Uh, mapping windows, closing windows. Okay, so there is a lot of different customization tools. I'm not too familiar with the Cinnamon desktop environment, so I can't really say if this is a uh, Cinnamon thing or if this is a uh, custom thing they added here. System properties, if I go ahead and open this up. Okay, this is... <laughs> um, yeah, this is one of the uh, many things that it looks like they just completely tried to remake. You have my processor and all that. This is a virtual machine, so you're not going to get the full information. Uh, it would be cool if they had the little uh, Windows score. I think it's the Windows index scores. If they found a way to incorporate that, that'd be pretty funny. Device manager, remote settings, system protection. So let's see what it does if you go to device manager. It takes you to system information. Okay, that's fair enough. So if I go to operating system, we are running, this is running Linux 5.7. So that's a pretty uh, recent kernel. Looking at C library here, uh, it has Ubuntu. So this is a Ubuntu based distribution. Kernel modules. So there's a lot here and this is laid out very, very nice. Let's go ahead and close this out. You have remote settings, system protection, advanced system settings. Let's see what that opens up. So here, we have the ability to change our computer name, network IDs, uh, hardware. So we go into the device manager through here. Yeah. So what we're going to do is actually go ahead and install this through here. So start the installation. And when we get booted into this, I'm going to download a random exe off the internet and see how easy it is to install it. Because on the website, it did mention that it should be moderately easy. However, I, I personally would not recommend that. Uh, let's go, I'm trying to go LA. There we go. So next, I'll run through the installer. This seems like a very basic Ubuntu installer. So erase the entire disk, put in my information there. We have our summary. Let's go ahead and install now. And the process should begin. All right, we seem to be all done. So we're gonna go ahead and restart this machine and see what it actually looks like when we boot up to it. So they even copied what that screen looks like. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove my optical drive, hit enter to reboot the machine, close that out, and we will see what we get. If we get that uh, the traditional looking Windows 10 login like we saw in the screenshot. And so far so good. My resolution didn't save from the install, but that is okay. Down here we have the shutdown, restart, and suspend button. Uh, looks like right here we could change our desktop session from the uh, regular desktop. We have the uh, install session, media center. I'm not gonna look too far into this. I'm just gonna go ahead and log in here. And this is what we get. So just like before we have this, uh, oh, I click on it and it closes right away. So we're not gonna get to see or experience that. Uh, configure monitor resolution, we don't really need to do that. Uh, quit, so hit next and it should quit out. Oh, 
It's opening Hi, this again. I'm Hello, your personal assistant. I was created to help you in the first steps. The I like that. Oh, it's still going. No, thank you. Uh, let's restart the system. To <laughs> okay, so there. <laughs> nope, damn it. So it seems like we're getting the authentic Windows experience with this so far. Let's go ahead and log in again. Try this, <laughs> try this again. I'm gonna give it a really, really easy chance to download something that should work fine. Let's get Notepad++, which is a Windows-only application. Uh, if you're looking for this on Linux, I would recommend using Notepad QQ, but I just wanna see if this is going to work at all. I still can't get this, th oh, now I can. Okay, good. 32-bit, uh, oh, here are all the ads, beautiful. I love downloading Windows applications from the internet. Uh, installer, downloaded. So it does look like the uh, proper icon is there. So let's open this up. Yep, wine is firing up. Let's see if see if it gets into it. Now, like I said, this is a very, very easy application to install. This should work, no problem with wine. Uh, if you get into applications like uh, After Effects and uh, Microsoft Office Suite, stuff like that, you're not gonna have that fluid or that good of a time but this is just to see if it can handle the most basic of uh, Windows application installation. So install, show details, and run, and we'll see if it works, and it does. That's good. So we got a Windows application to open with no issue whatsoever. It showed the icon and everything. So at least with simple applications, we know that this will work. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna open up this store real quick and then we'll call it a day. Uh, this just looks like the, so about software. Uh, <laughs> they just plastered Microsoft uh, icons and logos everywhere and renamed things and called it a uh, clone. So I, I, I'm i done looking, I'm done looking at this. Um, basically, in conclusion, I would say that this is kinda silly, uh, it's cool, that they went to this extent to try to make a Linux distribution this much like Windows. But I would think the point of going to Linux is to kind of get away from that and experience something new. Um, I I get what they're trying to do here, but you saw I just got, ooh, an update's available. It's gonna probably make me restart the computer too. The point is to try to get away and how they're going about this, making this look like a Windows machine uh, somebody installing this thinking that it will work like one is not going to end up having a good time. Personally, I could not recommend this. Uh, it's cool to check out, and if you were looking at checking it out, I might have just saved you some time. Uh, so, yeah, this is about it. It's a uh, cheap Ubuntu clone of Windows with icons and fake application names. But some things are kind of cool. Uh, yeah. That about wraps that up. I hope you did enjoy this video. So this video has been brought to you by my very first two Patreon subscribers, Christopher and Mitchell. Thank both of you so much for supporting my content. If you are interested in becoming a Patreon, there'll be a link in the description down below. There are some benefits, you can check it all out there. If you don't feel like doing that, subscribing and liking this video works perfectly fine. I hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye. Yeah.